got Nasty Nate Jennerman back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Ken Beverly at LFA 61 on February 22nd. Uh, Nate, what's going on, man? How are you? Not too much. Just getting out of the gym. Doing well. How are you, James? I'm doing awesome. I, I don't feel like this is a regular interview. Normally, I'm used to seeing your dogs in the background. Uh, where are you headed? You said you just finished at the gym. Where are you headed to? Yeah, j uh, just uh, in the car um, to do the interview. There's a lot of guys still down there, so figured I'd come in here nice and quiet for you. See, look at that. I pre these are the lengths you go to for these interviews. I really appreciate it because, you know, the peace and quiet does uh, definitely help. Um, the last time we spoke was, was back in August, and that's the last time you fought. Um, we're talking about a fight here in February. W was this the right amount of time off for you? Yeah. Um, you know, normally I don't take much time off. I'm a pretty uh, active fighter. I like to keep in there and just stay active. That's my favorite. Um, but, you know, after, you know, the last fight didn't go my way, um, you know, took some time to really, uh, you know, physically I was fine. Nothing was hurting, but like in my mind, like I was hurting real bad. Um, you know, it was just a really tough fight for me. Um, I'd never been finished before. Um, you know, I personally thought the ref stopped it a little early, but I understood where he stopped it from. So it, there was no like, like complaining on that. Like, there's no way I was like, um, you know, going to like send in, uh, what do you, whatever you call it to reverse it or anything it was fine but yeah it was just tough mentally like coming back from that so I took some time off from the gym to you know mentally get back to me and then yeah been been ready to go I was supposed to fight in December and like right as I got the contract I sprained my knee so we were like nope let's uh let's wait a little longer and really come back with a with a big win Start 2019 off on the right foot there. Uh, one of the benefits you have is you come from a great camp, uh, Rufus Sport. Um, you know, you mentioned that it was this was a tough loss for you. Was there any advice you got, anyone in particular that, that really was, was there for you during that time, maybe some, some things that you took with you that you can bring into this fight at all? Yeah, uh, you know, um, they, Duke, is, uh, Duke called me that Monday and talked to me about a lot of stuff. And then um, our biggest thing has been mentality. Um, so Duke's been uh, with me on my mentality and coach Kush has been with me on my mentality. Um, you know, I, last fight, I just didn't fight. Like all, all the losses I've had is because I went out there and I just didn't fight and it sucks to like come back from that, you know, and, and know that I didn't do the things that I normally do. So it was really tough. Um, yeah, like I said, now we've been working on a lot of mentality stuff and, ready to show that on uh, February 22nd that, you know, my mentality is back to where it needs to be. And I'm just, I'm showing up to fight. I'm going to fight every time. Ken Beverly, what do you know about him? Uh, eight and three record. How do you feel like you match up against him? Yeah. Eight and three record. Um, you know, I went and watched his uh, last two fights and uh, he's tough. You know, he's, he's well-rounded. He, uh, you know, it kind of seems like he's ready to stand up with anybody. And then, uh, you know, he kind of got taken down each time, but, uh, he uh, either got on top or got back up every single time. And then, um, then he was looking for the takedowns and, you know, looking good from the top, you know, he's well-rounded, tough kid. Um, yeah, I just, I think I'm better everywhere though. So, um, you know, no offense against him, but, um, you know, he's eight and three with uh, five decisions and 12 and four with 10 submissions. Like I go out there to finish fights. I'm not trying to sit in there for um, a decision. So, you know, he can grind all he wants. Uh, I'm looking to finish from the from the time the bell rings. Do you feel like the level of competition will, will play a role in this? I mean, you fought nothing but killers. If you look at, you know, even your last fight or even before that, I mean, you fought some really tough guys. Do you feel like having gone through those experiences will, will pay dividends in this matchup? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, experience-wise, like, do I have that many more fights? No, but I have that many more fights against really, really tough guys. You know, my, my last three losses, Alex Gilpin finished on the contender series. He's waiting for a, a UFC contract. Bobby Moffat's undefeated in the UFC now. And, uh, you know, Damon Jackson was in the UFC, and he's beaten on that door to get right back in. So um, I've only lost the top-notch guys, and I've been, I've, I've been beating top-notch guys too. So That's great. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, training camp, I imagine, is going well. I try and follow all the updates and everything. But uh, you've got, you know, obviously Brendan Allen fighting. You've got Paul Felder fighting James Vick coming up this weekend. How has camp been this time around? Uh, camp's been awesome. Uh, you know, you mentioned Paul Felder right there that uh, I've been one of his main guys. So 
I've been going with him a lot, like drilling, sparring, light, light sparring, whatever, whatever you are, whatever we're doing. I'm his partner, wrestling, jujitsu. Like I've been doing everything with Paul. So it's been really good to get to go alongside Paul, um, you know, cause I mean, he's a killer. So get to go with him and he's about the same height as my opponent. So everything I've been doing and, you know, just been getting ready and yeah, I've been going with Paul a lot, Craig Eckelberg a lot. I've been going with Armandale Cameron a lot. Uh, a lot of guys that, you know, kind of have that same, uh, this guy's a taller and a, a thicker guy. So I've been going with guys that are just as tall as me and then thicker than me. So I, I've been going with bigger, better guys in my opinion. Who's going to be in the cage with you that night as far as your cornerman? Uh, Scott Cushman and Daniel Wanderlei. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And uh, how, how do we stuck. see this fight playing out? I mean, uh, finishes seem to be your thing. Are we going to see another one here on February 22nd? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking for the finish. You know, um, my, my first pro knockout has been avoiding me this whole time, uh, working this mentality. M maybe this is it. But um, as I say with everybody, uh, you know, I want the knockout, but if he leaves his neck out there, I'm snatching it up and I'm taking it home. I'll, I'll take my 11th sub victory as well. It don't matter to me. Finish by knockout or submission. I'm getting the finish though. Are, are you looking at contender series after this? I imagine if you get the win here, I mean, LFA has been great to you. They've been giving you lots of fights and opportunity, but I imagine contender series is where you want to be after this, just because you can get that kind of leapfrog the process and, you know, just go and get a fight there. And if you look good, it's, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, I'm open to anything after this, um, to be honest, you know, I love LFA. Uh, I would love to be back with LFA. Uh, you know, I like fighting for them. So if they want me back, I'll be back there. Um, if contender series calls, that's awesome. Um, you know, and I also feel like, you know, where I'm at with my record and, you know, who I've been, who I've lost to, I'm any short call away from a UFC, uh, call as well. So I'm up for anything. I'm just focused on Ken Beverly right now. I got to take him out, and then uh, then we'll see what's going to happen after that. Uh, but right now, focused. I, I can tell, man. It's uh, it's it's great to hear, and uh, this is going to be an awesome matchup. It's coming up here February 22nd. It is LFA 61. Uh, Nate, just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. All right. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at NastyNateMMA. Uh, Twitter is the same thing. Um, Facebook, my, my profile is public. So if you just want to go follow me on there too. Um, yeah, just shout out to everybody at Rufus Sport. you know, Duke and Kush, especially just helping me with my mentality a lot on the pads and everything and on the bag, big time. Um, shout out to Joe Nichols, Daniel Wanderlei, always keeping my, uh, jujitsu on point. Um, yeah, shout out combat corner, protecting me with the best gear. Um, great mouth guards, keeping my teeth in my mouth where they belong. Uh, yeah. Uh, Raw Dog and Sheboygan, big big sponsor that I got. They're they're always helping me out with the pups, helping me out there. And if you're uh, in the Sheboygan area, make sure you get there. Uh, Champ Sports Bar in Sheboygan, Greasy Spoon in Sheboygan, uh, Weiss Brothers out here in Sheboygan. Just a lot of local people behind me, which is awesome. And then I've got 1740 Beard Balm. Healthy Living Acupuncture, love my acupuncture, Advanced Spine Care and Wellness for chiropractic. And then, uh, yeah, I got a lot of people behind me, and I love all you, and I can't wait to go out there and show you uh, just how much better I am on uh, February 22nd because I'm coming, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to kill.